some organizing like I don't know how that works either. People only really care when you fuck with their business, when you fuck with their money. This is a lot of this is capitalism at play still. Yeah. And so when people know it's not business as usual is when they start to listen. Um I don't know if that means that we get everything that we want, but and people who have been uplifted and know what is going on cannot be duped. And once you get a sense of that, there's nothing that can stop you from continuing to pursue that that empowerment. Yeah. Um, empowering us to have to take action in an aggressive and violent way if, that, if that's what it comes to. But yeah, it can't just be like, oh, everything's good, let's just say this is what we want, and like, yay, that's nice, we don't want that. Like, no, sometimes you need to have some heft to some things. Um, I really like that the way you're describing anger because that's something that I've definitely seen that there's and I, I'm curious what you've heard or if you hear anything and if you don't that's totally fine but I've, I hear different types of anger there's like folks on one side who describe to me being youth and seeing their community changing not knowing what the fuck is going on and so sometimes they just want to like get drunk and take a bat and like go and hit someone because they don't know how to fight against this thing so mm. there's like a certain group that can harness that and say come with us and then there's like another type of anger you know I, like do you hear folks talking about different types of anger being angry at gentrification ever huh that's interesting uh yeah so the way that i would think about the way that i would break that down is, is in a slightly different way yeah uh we like to think of in organizing and specifically in education uh transformational education so and I don't have the specific wording of it but the basic idea is let's say we can compartmentalize how education makes us feel and then how we react to that um, and on the different quadrants there's some that are critiquing um, systems and some that are taking action against systems and some that, that are not mm -hmm. and sometimes the action is hurting us and sometimes the action is hurting is good for us mm. And so, uh, like a student who doesn't, is mistreating the class, is called out, and is not giving any support. Fuck this. Fuck the school system. It's not for me. It doesn't care for me. Yeah. I'm going to be self-destructive. I critique it, but I hurt myself. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Whereas someone's like, fuck it. Y'all don't care about me. Fuck y'all. I don't, you critique it, but I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to prove to you that I'm not what you think I am. Yeah, yeah. There are some that don't have the critique, but just happen to go those routes. I've heard where people are like, yeah, fuck it. It's better than whoever we got in here now. I think this is nice. Kick out all the people who, like, sell drugs and this and that. Kick out, like, there's a lack of, there's, there's a lack of political, there's a lack of education there. I see what you're there's saying. There's a lack of consciousness there. Yeah. There's a lack of critical thought there. The answer is not kick out these folks, right? It's, okay. They have a need. They're selling whatever they're selling to survive. What can we do to address that need? And do we have to get rid of them? Because if we get rid of them and we bring someone else, what's the chance you won't get? You won't get pushed out too. Yeah, yeah. Keeping them is not. they keeping them around is not. It's not going to displace you, but there's something else that's not being met there. So, I, I, what I'm trying to say is, people have different responses to it, and sometimes they hurt themselves. Sometimes they want to take action to the thing. Sometimes they take action against what they think is the individual perpetrator. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, no, this is, there's something bigger. It's like a system. Let's take action against that. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's go against that. And people are in different areas of that. So I've seen where people will say, fuck it. Let gentrification in. This is better for me. Uh, this is better for the community. This raises the property values. And it's a very individualistic take yeah. on how to address the issue or how they're being affected. And I think what I've seen is with more, I'm not thinking of the right word. I want, I want, I keep saying political education. I'm not sure if that's the word I'm thinking of, but with more access to information, those things change. And without, without providing uh, a structure that lets for a critique of systems and of capitalism specifically, I've seen people not care and be really individualistic in both the response to and for gentrification. I think absent that political knowledge, that political education, we hit a whole spectrum of actors that work for gentrification without realizing it and without 
and we get people who are combative in ways that are self-defeating. Mm. Um, that's what I've seen, if that yeah, makes sense. That does, actually, and that, that quadrant thing is really helpful. Um, okay, um, just for clarity so I can think about this later, what are the things you worked on? Housing, you did, you did, you were mobilizing or having meetings for s small businesses mm -hmm. to be tenants mm -hmm. in ELAX things? Yes, and um, more so that, that transformed into a committee that was a larger committee of community members and stakeholders in the Boyle Heights area that were going to be a part of a, the, the dream was to have a standing committee who were going to be able to help us in advising and running that process. Um, we're going to be the stewards of like ultimately not just our our economic portfolio or our those economic commercial spaces, yeah. but stewards of decisions having to do with like land, having to do with work, having to do with different things that Elec was working on. Okay. I think that was the overall dream. Specifically, we were going to start with economic enterprises. So you're saying like it wasn't just about filling the space. It was about who we actually filling it with. Mm -hmm. What are they actually doing? Mm -hmm. Is it something we want in here? Right. Okay. How do we visualize this for the community at large and more so how do we make sure that what they're doing is helpful to the community? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a difficult thing to do as a developer. I mean, been, being in conversations, hearing why Monarca is a good or not a good tenant <laughs> or person to ever have um, versus, it, like, the, right, then you got to fill the space, yeah. but then you, is, who do you fill? Is Monarca the space? Is Monarca, but then what, will it stay vacant? Right. Can they pay the rent? Right. Are those issues you guys really grappled with? Those were those were the things that we were hoping to grapple with. I yeah. mean, it, it, um, I was let go. So <laughs> during things. like around that time. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the, then the way that I think about that that space was, we that was the overall objective yeah. to have that standing body of community citizens being able to be stewards of this aspect of ELAC developments of of, of ELAC and working towards something greater. And those nuances require that we understood a couple of different things. It required that we understand how ELAC operates, how we get some of our money, how we are able to pay for some of these spaces, and it also required us on another end to say, what are what is a business? Mm -hmm. What are the economic models? What are alternative economic models? And how does this work with and gel or not gel with community and community needs? And so it was this short series of we want to give y'all access to people who are from the community and that have had successful maybe not so successful businesses to give you an understanding of what that looks like yeah we want y'all to understand what capitalism is and how that functions and how either that serves or doesn't serve a community and also different alternative economic methods like um like uh, cooperatives oh, for yeah. example yeah. like we want to be able to talk about these things and maybe what we think are more suited for what the values that you lack and this community has and then we were talking about, yeah, so the case studies, specific mm -hmm. alternatives, and in that, we're going to come up with a request for proposals, a protocol for being able to assess how it is that a business was not only going to apply for this, but also be accountable to the community based on what we heard and what we were coming up with as community members ourselves. Yeah. So in the same way that, in the same way that Metro started mirroring ELEC's process for development and having that be a standard. We we're trying to have that standard be something similar, not just for for development of housing, yeah, but specifically for businesses. Okay, yeah. I could, I, that sounds hard yes. and amazing. Yeah. Like, how do we replicate this process? How, yeah. do we, how, how do we make this a standard in general, but also specifically within, like, developers who are, do, who are, building, who are building multifamily housing and commercial at the bottom? How do we have this process where community is the key central stakeholder for whatever it is that wants to come in? Big box chain, what are you going to do for the community? Yeah. Oh, you're Monarca, you can afford to pay X amount. Can we use your space every now and then for free? Yeah. Can we do community programming? What other things are you committed to? And having that be our process for saying who yes and who no. Sounds it, like a whole ass other ELAC thing. <laughs> like, okay. It was. And I was excited for it. Yeah, it's dope. 
But I just sounds, didn't have time for it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. I'm doing that. They're all like.